How's it going guys? In this video I'll be showing you how to make a nylon buffer pin for your Ruger 1022. The pin itself will cost you just under 75 cents at your local hardware store. Let's get into it. Some of the items you will need to complete this tutorial will be one, a Ruger 1022, one nylon bolt measuring 1 4th inch by 3 inch long, hex style bolt with the threads down toward the bottom because we're going to need all this part right here. Depending on your Ruger 1022, you might need a punch to get the original buffer pin out. One 5 32nd Allen key, depending on the model of your, your Ruger. Some of them require a flat blade screwdriver to, re to remove the receiver from the stock. Also optional, one Dremel tool. This is just the cheap one from Harbor Freight with a cutoff wheel and a sanding disc. First thing you're going to want to do to start this mod is going to be to safety check your firearm. You never want to handle a firearm that's loaded, obviously, or any ammo near it that can possibly go off. First thing you're going to want to do is remove the magazine. There's nothing in there. Lock the bolt back to the rear. There's nothing inside, nothing inside. Now that that's been done, go ahead and throw the bolt forward. Get your Allen key, your 532nd in size, and go ahead and remove this bolt right here. This is the composite stock on the newest Ruger that's available right now. This bolt will not come out, so don't worry about losing that. Next thing you're going to want to do, put your safety right in the middle, and at the same time, Pull up, on the receiver right there, and then the rest should come right out and separate the stock from the receiver. Okay, so what we're looking at here, we're going to be replacing this pin right here. This pin uh, on my model actually just falls out, so no punch is required. You might need to hit yours with a punch, but step one, remove the pin. Let's talk about the pin really quick. So. Everyone, you can see the wear and tear on my pin right here. Everybody says that because the bolt on this gun is metal, you probably shouldn't have it hitting a metal buffer pin. Makes sense to me. So instead, we're going to be swapping it out with a nylon one using our nylon bolt. Next step, you will need your nylon bolt. Once again, that bolt size is 1 4 inch by 3 inches long, hex style with the threads not all the way through the bolt itself. We're going to end up cutting the head of this bolt off and measuring down one and one quarter inch down the, uh, the shaft of the bolt and that will be our new buffer tube. For this video I will be using a cheap Harbor Freight Dremel style tool with a cutoff disc to be uh, taking the head off the bolt and cutting it down to size. You can use whatever you want. I've seen people use kitchen knives. I've seen People use uh, drywall knives. Uh, whatever you have to get the head off this bolt and cut it down the size will work perfectly for this. Safety first, so I will be wearing sunglasses, anything to protect your eyes uh, in case that cutoff wheel breaks. You don't want any of that shrapnel going into your eyes. I will be using a uh, plastic box to support the nylon bolt because I do not want to cut my gun mat. Link for the gun mat will be in the description, by the way. I love this thing. <laughs> Now that we have the head to the bolt cut off, we're going to go ahead and clean up the uh, burrs and everything and kind of flatten it out. Um, for that, we're going to be using our sanding wheel. You don't have to use a sanding wheel. Like I said, you can use a piece of sandpaper. It's going to be the same effect. And you just want to get the burrs off of it. Uh, it doesn't have to be real pretty. Okay, now it's time to cut the nylon bolt to size. You can measure it however you want. Uh, the easiest way I've found so far to make sure that you get your bolt cut to the right size would be get your receiver, stick the bolt through the buffer tube hole, make sure it's flush on this side, turn it around, grab yourself a pen or a marker, and then just trace around the bolt. 
Once you trace around your bolt, go ahead and repeat the first step and cut along the line. Uh, on this step, I actually went a little further out just so I can sand it down and make it look nice in case the cut comes out uh, crooked. I'm going to reattach my cutting wheel and cut this bolt to size. Okay, and once you get it cut off, once again, you're just going to cut off, or you're going to sand off the burrs on the end of it, making it smooth. Now you're going to want to grab your receiver once again, get your freshly cut nylon bolt, stick it in the buffer pin place, and as you see, it sticks in there. Check for fitment. You don't want it hanging out. It's pretty flush on both sides. Um, pretty flush on both sides. And this bolt does not come out as easy as my other one now. So now if I wanted to take it out, I will have to use a punch like so. Okay, now reassembly of your Ruger 1022 is just the opposite of how we took it apart. You're going to lower the receiver in, making sure... If you cut your bolt too big, it actually will not fit in the receiver. So this is why fitment is very important. If it's not going in or you're having problems, make sure that your safety is in the middle and not more to one side. And it should go right in. Don't force it. It'll go. just like so. Now we're just going to turn it around, get our Allen key, and tighten it. About hand tight, and you should be good to go. I hope you guys found this video helpful on how to turn a 50 cent nylon bolt into a buffer pin for your Ruger 1022. Little backstory behind this bolt. I went to every hardware store in my local town, my Lowe's, Harbor Freight, Big R, Home Depot, and I could not find it. Even went to my local Fastenal, they said they can get them to me at 40 cents a bolt. However, it would be $7 to ship it. That didn't quite make too much sense to me. so. After almost giving up and forgetting about it, I went to my local True Value, it's actually Ashley's Hardware, and got three of these at 55 cents a piece. So I would start my search there. I've seen some people say that they got theirs at their local Home Depot, um, but apparently nobody uses nylon bolts anymore, so it was kind of hard to find, but if you can find it, it's totally worth the mod. Thank you for watching. For more videos like this, please uh, give a thumbs up. Meet me in the comments, tell me what you want to see, and uh, stay tuned for more videos like this. I got a lot of how-tos. We have a build series coming up on one of my other playlists. Uh, we're going to strap a Harbor Freight engine onto possibly a drift cart. Who knows where that'll go. But uh, yeah, just decided to make this channel on all the hobbies and shenanigans me and my friends get into. So uh, if you're interested, please subscribe. Thank you.